Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time you are at at the moment. We are mid-evening, back with episode 156 of The Real Wrestling Show. Dash blog. And we are The Real Wrestling Show, Dash Blog, for what we believe to be The Real Wrestling Show, which is telling doors. A-E-W. Yeah. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly bring to you the... Greatest wrestling, blogging, tag team champions of the world. We got... The Bull Bastard with a bit of toothache at the moment. We've also got... The Tom Dorsey with a bit of a bow. <laughs> and together we make up the Real Wrestling Show. Dash Bloggy Oh. Oh, my name's Biggs, by the way. I just said the Bull Bastard with a bit of toothache. My name is actually Biggs. But uh, what we do on here is we do a rundown of the Dynamite Live 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 and our views and whatnot. We've got a couple of other videos, check them out on our channel. So we're going to kick it off with some dynamite. And Dorsey will be explaining what went down. Over to you. Casino Battle Royale. Then the winner of this goes on to the main event by John Mockley. Or a chance to fight for the interim AEW title. Yeah. I don't know. I said, then. Huh? That was a bit of a mouthful. Yeah. And a bit anyway, of a, and a, bit of a pointless uh, tournament, really. But there we yeah. are. You, get, you win this tournament, you get to carry a toy belt that you could have bought from Toys R Us. Yeah. And then you could do a storyline where maybe Dan Lambert or somebody relevant has got a belt for a couple of weeks with the person who's got the other belt. You know? Yeah. Or Sammy G. You know? Two belt Sammy G. It's <laughs> crap. There's no need in it. Um. Especially on on the on the cusp of what's about to happen later on in the show as well, I felt like fucking. It's like really in that one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Darby meets Kingston, Garcia, and Vlad Sarge to start this one. A uh, big chunk slam by Archer on Nice. Uh, took took away through the middle rope by Darby it was nice. Obviously, he didn't get eliminated either because he went through the middle rope. It was that with the same yeah, board? Then we have Starks, Hager, Phoenix, Wave, and Keith Lee enter. And Sterling intervenes, but he's still eliminated across Nice, the elimination. Archer almost eliminates Lee with a choke slam. Lee drops uh, the Lee counters and drops him out of the ring. And then there's John Silver, the Kashta, Casta, and the Ass Boys. Uh, real long promo <laughs> by Casta. So basically, the next people are about ready to come out as soon as they enter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hobbs, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Danny Martin, and Newton Wheeler come up next. Daddy Coffin Drop to the uh, Coffin Drop to Kyle and Fish. Uh, Lee eliminates the Ass Boys, then Swerve eliminates Lee. Uh, the final uh, uh, entrant is Andrade. Yay. Silver eliminated by Hobbs. Eddie eliminated. I'm not sure by who. I don't know. I never wrote any uh, who eliminated who. I've just got the list of it. Tony Nice yeah. went out first, though. Yeah, no, I, read that. I said that. Ah, okay. Because uh, Mark Sterling kind of cost him. Uh, Hager eliminated, Hobbs and Starks eliminated, and Takashka, Starks, Lowbridge is Dante for the elimination, Phoenix eliminates Starks, Nice backward by Swerve, Darby eliminates Fish, Swerve eliminates Darby, Andrade eliminates Swerve, Phoenix nice DDT on the counter, Utah eliminates Hobbs, mid low blow, then Andrade eliminates Phoenix. That was cool, that. Yeah. I like the low blow thing. You uh, eliminates Hobbs. Uh, Dragon screw in the rope. And a big kick. Kyle eliminates you. Uh, Kyle wins. I went with Phoenix man of the match. I went with Swerve man of the match in this one. He was uh, very entertaining in this. like the way he kept on essentially swerving. Mm. You know? uh, okay match and not enough spots. No, it's very too much Royal Rumble for me, actually. I had quite, quite a big number. Five times. Five times. Five moments. 
surprised me. Yeah. Uh, after the match, nothing happened. <clears throat> so yeah, it was um, yeah, it was okay, but like I said, not enough spots in it. Not that anything got missed. Nothing got missed in it, but it just I don't know. It just didn't have enough big moments, you know. I suppose for me, Swerve was probably the biggest moment in it by chucking Keith Lee out. Yeah. You know. But anyway, let's move on, shall we? We had a promo by Mox saying that um, O'Reilly is basically in the wrong place. The tournament belongs to him. Love you, Mom. Good promo. Yeah. Every every time Mox does a promo, I know he kind of does that Samoa Joe angry man type thing, like, but his promos are proper believable. And the stuff yeah. that he says always makes sense. So yeah, good promo from me, uh, from uh, Mox for me. Then we had another promo, and it is not so much a promo. This was an announcement, which is the uh, new belts for AEW, All, At All Atlantic belt. And there's been a tournament set. Uh, the bracket is Buddy Matthews versus Pac, Ethan versus Miro, Penta Obscudo, these uh, Malachi Black, and then there's a New Japan match which hasn't been announced yet. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that is. What do you think? I like the idea of another title. I just think it's a bit of a shame they're doing it right as the you know as a crown a, a fake world champion. Mm. Um, and I like the competitors. I think everyone kind of deserves a shot. Maybe Miro lost on Rich just because he's had the TNT title win already. I think Miro, to be honest, there is the the country. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, an, it's yeah. a different country, and like, but uh, I think Pac's going to win it. I hope so. That would be a wicked champ. Because they did make a lot of hoo-ha when they were doing the promo about, oh, we're number one in the UK, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I genuinely think it's going to be Pac. So, but getting into it and talking about Pac, next matchup, we had Buddy Matthews versus Pac. Um... In the Atlantic Tournament, first round. Like spoilers away, he's going to win that already. <laughs> yeah, Pac's going to win the whole tournament. That's why. Um, <laughs> starts off basically wrestling, Matt, Matt wrestling back and forth, and lots of evasions. Um, Pac outwitting uh, Pac and Buddy outwitting each other, trying to one up man each other. It's quite a good start to the match. Uh, Buddy gets chucked over the table. Yet again, third table in a row that doesn't go through. Uh, Chicago skyline to pack was nice by Buddy, which is uh, Cole Cabana's move. Yeah. In rope tilt -a, tilt a whirl DDT by Pack. Well, it wasn't a tilt a whirl, it was a twisting, it was like a twisting DDT. It was fucking incredible. Yeah. But he always does do the DDTs, wicked Pack does. Uh, spring back German by Pack and then a clothesline. Liger bomb by Buddy. Poiser armor by Pack. Black, outfit, Black Arrow finish looked absolutely incredible. Uh, Pack through to the next round. Pack wins. I won the Pack Man of the match. And I thought it was a good match. Yeah, I, I thought it was a real good match. Um, I went with. Pack Man of the match. Who? Pack. Pack, yeah. And I had four moments. Booker! It's a Booker! He's got himself a Booker! After the match, uh, Death Triangle celebrates. House of Black come out and look as though they're going to fuck up Buddy Matthews. But they don't. They just kind of stand around. Exciting shit. So, yeah. It's a good match. Pac's always a, an incredible entertainer. I don't think the chemistry was perfect between them. No. But the beginning of the match, I was thoroughly entertained. Yeah. So. But over to you, Bud. Over to you. Except, yeah, the... Um... And then he thinks some promo to go in mental because Hager cost him a shot for real title on the Battle Royal by eliminating him and he wants a match against Hager on Hager on Rampage. And Hager says, Alrighty then! But well, he will. Then oh, there's an in ring promo does. by Trent. Pulls out FTR, says, uh, We didn't lose to you. I know it wasn't your fault, but since you're fighting champions, I think we deserve a re fight, re -fight. FTR completely agree. Then Osprey's music hits. He appears on the ramp, and he is. Then they are attacked by the United Empire. FTR do mention um, Osprey's name and says about we got attacked by Osprey's bitch boys, and then 
I thought that was cr- I thought the way they did it was like, oh yeah, come on, eh, come on, I know you're gonna bring out all your boys, oh, whatever. and then obviously Osprey comes out mm. to a huge pop, huge pop. So uh, yeah, carry on. Uh, yeah, the year I said last year, you got to go fire attack. Double made in Japan by the guys, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Open, and an elbow by Will Osprey was pretty shit. Right, I'll do the next promo. You do the next match, then, bruh. Next up, we had a promo. It was Regal, O'Reilly, Fish, and Cole. Regal says, you're not ready for Mox. O'Reilly says, yeah, but I got good wins. I got good wins, though. I beat some people, though. And, uh, yeah. It was okay. Regal, like, it didn't feel right for Regal to be doing, to cut the promo. Maybe it should have been, like, Brian Danielson or Utah, someone that had a little less prestige to him. Probably you, actually, because if he comes out and he's like, ah, you ain't ready for it and all that, O'Reilly's going to look at him and be like, oh, what are you talking about, punk? And then O'Reilly then get, just gets fucked up. Say the old WWE storylines, because Regal was the NXT GM in it. Yeah. At this beauty, it's where he's like, pain in the, the winds that were pain in the ass for him, right? Yeah. So I think they were just playing on that old ah, okay. history. I didn't know too much about that, so... Vince and NXT. Point two. Two point crap. Yeah. Two point almost out of business. And next up, we have Hangman Page versus Finley. The debut. Oh, the debut of. Yeah, the debut of Finley. Uh, elbows from Cedar into the guard rail, Hangman. Six fans beer. She seemed very happy with it. Yeah. And a spinning elbow off the top to the outside by Finley. SCF by Finley, then a knee slam. A cross body over the top to the outside by Hangman. Sit out Powerbomb. Uh, Powerbomb? Sit out Powerbomb and gets two for Hangman. Nice backbreaker by Finley. Big Lariat, then the buckshot Lariat. Hangman wins. I went with Hangman Man of the Match. I went with Finley Man of the Match. And I felt the match was very stale, and the match should, uh, should have ended a lot earlier, lasting far too long. You know, considering Hangman's, considering Hangman's just walked away from the world title. Not to not to take anything away from David Finley because he was, he was an awesome little wrestler, I liked. I mean, like, but for Hangman to be hanging that long in a ring, just goes to show, like, oh well, they've just pushed him mid card straight away. There's no yeah. like, there's no like urgency to keep him up or anything like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Which I, thought, I find quite we, sad. We, we, Say again? Very WWE booking. Yeah, I find it quite sad, mate. I don't know, fuck it. Hmm. Uh, I felt like it could have been a rampage match, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it was stale, very stale, man. Uh, yeah. Word for word, yeah. though, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, how many movies you have, bro? Three. Yeah. Um, after the match, Hangman cuts a promo. Doesn't look like he's getting a title shot anytime soon mm. since he wasn't in the Battle Royal or even mentioned in it. No. So we'd like to challenge for the IWGP World Heavyweight Title. Um, okay, then Adam Cole comes out. Um, Says so you, you, ju- you just called out Okada, but Jay White might be the champ at the time. Yeah. What he said. Which, uh, for a lip, he is not. He is, is he? Yeah, Jay White winner. I didn't put that in the news, so I'll, I'll just drop that out now. <laughs> <laughs> new, new world champion in Japan, Jay White. Um, uh, it, might, uh, it might not even be Okada, it might be Jay White, it is. Um, and says, You don't deserve the title shot, if anyone deserves the title shot, it's me. Yeah, and the crowd were like, Ah. Yeah, whatever. He got a shit reaction. To the point, right? When he was actually shaking. Yeah. So I think... I got a feeling the fact that the crowd didn't react to him in the way that they have been elsewhere. When he was holding a mic, he was like... You could like visibly see his hand shaking. I don't know whether it was like... He was cold. And he had... <laughs> he had cold old cockles? Or he was just nervous because of the reaction. I would go with the latter myself. 
But uh, yeah. But anyway, next up we had a promo from uh, with Tony Chauvoni, which his name is actually pronounced Tony Chauvon. Uh, and it was Thunder Rosa issues an open challenge. Marina Chauffeur takes up the offer. A little bit more on that in a little bit. Um, I like Marina Shafir. I think she's a good little wrestler. She looked pretty good in the promo from the side. She looked like hot. She looked better than what she does in the ring. Like yeah. as in, you know, modeling someone to be on TV, if you know what I mean. I know that sounds mental because it's AEW and you just are what you are, but there's still got to be some sort of presentation. You know what I mean? Um, then we had another promo, which was Tony Chavone in the ring. <clears throat> and it was Wardlow. And the reason I'm running through these, mate, is because you can not do the next match. So if you run through the Wardlow bit, I'll do the next match, and then you can do the main event. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I declined the Battle Royale. Of the Battle Royal, because if he's going to become the world champion, he wants to beat the real world champion, which is CM Punk. Which I completely agree. I like the way they went. I'm not saying CM Punk's the real world champion, mate. I'm saying he's good that he wants to be the real world champion. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all know that Punk should have been stripped of his belt. Yeah, this, should, this interim shit, man. Yeah. So good. I like it sometimes. But, like, we've literally just had one. Like, yeah. Three? Yeah, not not even that probably like probably three weeks yeah. ago. He's only three years old, like I mean, mm. so it don't it don't wash for me, mate. No, <laughs> no, I agree. Okay, um, I completely agree with what Wardlow says. I want to beat the real champ. Um, so since that isn't available right now, I want the TNT title. Obviously, Sky comes out says i doing his shit. Like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go. Blah blah blah. Ethan and Dan Lambert to stop him. Bro, we don't get paid for this shit. Typical wrestling storyline, but okay. Yeah, you're not healthy, Scorp. You've got a bad leg, Scorp. Uh, yeah, I thought Waldo's promo was spot on, mate. I like the way they addressed the interim bullshit that nobody ever did. They must know as soon as they've announced it, but I don't know. They didn't react good to that. Yeah. Well, it's good that, like you just said then, someone that is actually talking about it. And mentioning about it, it's like, no, I don't want to be in that crappy thing. Like, I want to fight the champ. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Nonchalantly as well, like, because he, he didn't focus too much on it, and he moved on then, do you know what I mean? Like, which is yeah. another way of basically going, like, well, people are talking about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. I, I quite like that. What else do we have? Um, uh, Wardlow says he'll wait until Sky is 110% healthy. That was good yeah. as well. Ballsy. And then it goes straight backstage, stealing, dissing Wardlow, and saying that he will either have to go to court or wrestle 20 of the security dudes. Hmm. 20 security school kids? Or go to court? 20 security kids, please. Yeah, like, I haven't been doing that every week for fucking six months. No, I know. I know. But <laughs> it's, you know what it's going to be, though, don't you? Oh. It's going to be 20 odd power bombs. Because mm. that's it's what just people want to Power bombs, they'll be running down one by one. Power bomb. It power is. Bomb, it's going to be power bomb. bomb. It will. It'll be power bomb after power bomb after power bomb, mate. It's going to be good. It's going to look good, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's what's going to happen. Unless it is actually 20 guys versus Wardlow. But yeah. I don't think it is. I think it's elimination, isn't it? I don't know. I think they said the elimination. But uh, should be good though. Oh, just blowing up. And then we have another promo. Another, another, another promo. I like this promo. Go for that. Um, the Bucks and the Hardys and Jurassic Express in the Bucks' room. Cage sets up a ladder match. Lots of suspension in it. Jungle Boy looks shocked as fuck. He's like, ah, what? Like, you know, on a uh, road trip. Yeah. You know, right at the end when Tom Green's kissing that kid's mum and he's going, Mom! Yeah. Mom! That Jungle Boy made me feel like, like it, that was it. Like, it's like... Why? Right, because... What, why? Of... Why, why? Yeah. It was the fact that Christian went, Oh, I mean, you did beat Jungle Boy in his hometown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But the Jungle Boy's face was a picture, man. Like, Luchasaurus didn't really play anything. He just kind of just stood there and just... <laughs> I don't even think he did that in his promo. Like, But Jungle Boy, yeah, he was um, he was a bit of a sight, he was. I, I watched him all the way through, like... <clears throat> but anyway, on to a match. Uh, now we have... Marina Shafia versus Thunder Rosa, who has got a bit of bad publicity going around on her at the second and due to this match. So uh, we'll get into it. Uh, lock up roll. Lock. Oh, they, they were tied up, locked up together, and they were doing like rolls back and forth and taking each other down and getting back up. That was cool. Wrist lock by Thunder Rosa. Uh, nice transition into it. Odd hip attack by. Uh, Shafia she like in previous matches she's done it as well but where she like kind of holds her arm up in the air and then strikes a hip in yeah. like it looked shit in this match like um, deadlift snap suplex by Shafia was a bit dodgy but I think that was Thunder Rosa not really selling it well drop kick to a roped Shafia by Thunder Rosa and then a northern lights by Thunder Rosa Sick pump handle suplex backdrop by Shafia gets a two count. That was very cool. I like that a lot. Uh, Death Valley driver by Thunder Rosa gets two count. Thunder Roller Thunder Rosa does a roll up on the counter for the finish of the match. Um, I won with Shafia man of the match. I thought it was an okay match. Started off a bit stale. And the two moments. Uh, yeah, I have Marina man of the match and two moments. Um, after the match, Shafia attacks. Tony makes a save. Thunder Rosa hits a, fire, a Thunder Fire Driver. Tony gives the belt to Thunder Rosa, making out that she wants a title shot. Um, the news surrounding this match is apparently, once again, now the first instance of it was Ivelisse and mm -hmm. Thunder Rosa. Ivelisse basically moaned about Thunder Rosa non selling moves. And this is yeah. happening again. In this match, I don't know if you noticed it, I noticed there was a few spots where Thunder Rosa didn't look as though she wanted to take certain things mm -hmm. and basically everyone's saying now that she's she no sold, no sold again like I mean she's sandbagging people so yeah. I don't know like you know the fact that it's come up again and it's come up previous before AEW you know and yeah. and I'll, I'll be honest right I watched Thunder Rosa's blog right and she is fucking absolutely full of herself mate yeah. Her, her backdrop it's like our backdrop is all AEW like I, I ain't got no shit of me on you we haven't even got the name of our thing on you like Thunder Rosa's room right is literally everything Thunder Rosa all like artwork of her like pictures of her photos of her it's all her mate it's all about Thunder Rosa like do you know what I mean nobody else fucking matters so yeah. I, I don't know I think there's more I think there's more to it than what's actually being said and maybe Eva East was prematurely Got rid of, like Jimmy. The problem with Eva Lee's was she's got past it saying that with other people as well. Like she what? She had past with other people with that sort of thing as well, like saying it, and she's been accused of it as well. Yeah, oh, I, I forgot about that. But yeah. still, though, but I was in with, Elisa, with the Eva Lee's thing, but like you say when it, if it happens again, then like Marina is a relatively inexperienced wrestler, so then the rules that should be taking the reins in the match anyway. Absolutely. And if she's yeah. not careful and she does it to Marina Shafia too much, mate, she'll just fuck her up because she is a proper fighter. Like, well, mate, you, I you did, can uh, see it. My, well, my missus actually did the research because it was doing her editing. She is Ronda, winner Ronda Rousey's best mate. She's the winner yeah. of the UFC 4 horse sort of that. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And Thunder Rosa needs to watch herself. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because Thunder Rosa may think that she's like, you know, a badass in wrestling, but Marina Shafia is a badass in life. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so... <laughs> She could easily just fucking snap her arm out of her shoulder, like. <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, that's the, because I, I ain't got no news for the end of this, so that was my better news. So yeah, there's a bit of heat on Thunder Rosa at the moment. So, moving on. Two. Uh, Shivani with Jade and the Bullies, this and that. Jade Red with the other guy, Fucking dreadful. I would eat every inch of red velvet. Yeah. And hero them, bro. More so of red velvet in this promo though, mate. She was she looked incredible. And red outshines Jade every single time. 
Yeah. Whenever, whenever they're on camera together, Red just looks the focal point of the... It's not about... It doesn't look like it's about Jade. It doesn't look like mm. it's about Hogan either. It looks like it's all about Red. Mm. You know? So good. I like that. Because <laughs> I dislike Jade. <laughs> so now, it's time. Now go on. <laughs> Dynamite's main event of the evening. Nee. Was the number one contenders match for the fake world title? Yes. And it was between Kyle O'Reilly, the winner of the beginning match, versus Jean Moxley. Jean? Jean. 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 Well, shouldn't it? No, it's because you're, it's you're drinking Desperado, isn't it? So you've gone all Mexicano. Jean. It's not even Mexican, is it? That's freaking French. No, it's Jean. French. Oh, you're drinking Le Desperado. It's Mexican mixed in with bug, but bug must be French or something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's mixing it up like so it's just oui, gone oui. French. Oh. Oui, uh, oui. Anyway, uh, regal on commentary. Mock shows off his mat work in the beginning, like showing he can actually wrestle because people forget that he's not just a brawler. Yeah, Mox can very much wrestle. Uh, back and forth punches by both. Uh, Dragon's crew in the ropes, then a knee drop off the top while Mox is in the ropes. The back rake, then a flipping French country suplex off the middle rope by Mox. Mox boosts the rope while Carl's mouth is on it. The beastie. That was wicked, mate. Yeah, stiff as fuck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but the only problem is now, everybody's going to do it every single yeah, week, fine. every match. Do all that for me. Yeah. Um, Mox, oops, you want to look at the other one? Mouth on it. Then uh, a King Kong Lariat. Uh, Kyle counters the pile driver with a triangle choke, which is quite sweet. That was cool. Uh, so he was suplex by both the multiple clobbers. <laughs> what? Like laughing at the multiple clobbers. <laughs> Good turn. Benches anymore? They were just clobbering each other. There were multiple slobber knockers. Regal the paradigm shift. Mox wins as we predicted. Mox man of the match. Well, yeah, and Mox man of the match. I went O'Reilly man of the match. I did, I did, I did, I did. I am ashamed. But he's a good wrestler, man. He's a really good wrestler. He is, I mean, I rated him from day one. I always said, mate, like what you're disputed. Even like, even though I am a fan of Adam Paul, I always said, Kyle Roy is the best wrestler, though. Yeah. Oh, by far, mate. But uh, yeah, great match this was. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And I had a booker. Uh, I had four. Plus one to make a booker. <laughs> Are you not going to no cigarettes? Um, Decent show. Nothing yeah. after, was it? Because of, uh, because of the Battle Royal and this whole like, fake world championship going on. Yeah. And like I said, it didn't help they announced the Atlantic title when they did. If they were going to do this interim shift, I think they should have held off maybe. Yeah. On well, the Atlantic title, because I feel like that's what we're going to damn because it's going to be two tournaments now pretty soon. Well, this is one thing we said about f maybe five months ago, mate. Hopefully now, the fact that they've got all these wrestlers, they don't end up doing all these massive multi-matches all the time, because that's what that's what happened in WCW. That's when it all started going a bit to peak tong. There was too much yeah. going on. People couldn't keep engaged with the product. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's inevitable. Like, that's inevitable. You know? And that's the problem. Like, That's what's going to happen now, I feel. You know? I do like the, the idea of the belt, you know, and um, we said this from a long time ago, they needed to have some sort of like international, yeah, you know, trophy of sorts, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I agree with you, mate, being, being straight on the top of the new fake champion. Tournament. And as well, literally just finishing off the Owen Hart tournament as well. Yeah, yeah, and it, it does, it just seems like a way to keep wrestlers rotating. And I don't like that. No. I feel like storyline is essentially dropping because of that. You know? 
here is bookers and fans need to remember, like, you don't need a title to have a main event star either. I mean, look at The Undertaker. He was on top for, like, what, 35 years? How many world titles did he win? Like, five or six? Yeah. He wasn't a 17, 25-time world champion or anything like that. Different back end, though, bro. It's like, for some reason, like... You say back then, bro, but Undertaker's been on top until this... Tired. Yeah, but you got to remember, you got to remember, mate. Money, money, and the economy and stuff are like I was different. And I know that sounds mental, and it's, I don't want to get into politics and all that. But the economy plays a big part in everything, and it did play yeah. a big part in wrestling because money wasn't as big as what it is now. Now, yeah. now the significant difference in between people's wages is substantial. That you can look at it and go, Jesus Christ, rather than oh yeah, he's only getting paid an extra hundred quid, didn't he? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Now it's like, oh, he's only getting paid an extra 30 grand than me. 30 yeah. grand, mate. 30 grand is like a deposit on a house. It's a, it's a car. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of money. So that's that's the problem. I think the big numbers is what gets people now to be like, oh, no, like like the MGF situation. Like, do you know what I mean? No, yeah. I'm worth more money. And absolutely he's worth more money, but he has no right saying that. What he should have done is done what an old school like Undertaker did and kind of just keep working and eventually his money go up and up and up and up and up and his legacy lasts forever you know but unfortunately now whether whether this will work or a shoot I feel like there is some sort of taintedness to MJF now yeah you know so you know whether he goes to WWE or stays in AEW it's, it remains to be seen I think in WWE he will not be MJF anymore He'll probably be... He's not allowing to cut any of the promos he's cut already. He'll be something like Marvin Jarvin Ford or something like Allied, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I think if he stays in AEW now, it's going to be very difficult for... I don't know. I think it's going to be very... Di- I don't know, actually. If he stays in AEW, everything would probably be fine, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because no, I mean, like, the fans the would TV, fucking hate him, right? Unless the TV company still yeah. upset with it. Whether or not that's real, yeah, right? that's the only yeah, exactly. That's the that's the crazy thing about this whole angle at the moment, like. But I think the way that he could go to WWE mate and make a success of it is he came in as like Shane McMahon's mate, or Cody's protege. No, no, I don't even think that would work. I think it would see because people affiliate MJF with Cody. Not maybe not a, like the masses of WWE fans because they're very stupid. But because WWE don't get that, it wouldn't work, mate. Vince doesn't get it, so it wouldn't work. Well, that's the thing, oh, mate. It's like Cody coming in and doing what he's doing now. He's convinced He's convinced Vince, somehow, mm. that Cody is allowed... Like, he's convinced him to say, like, look, when I do interviews and stuff like that, I am talking about AEW. I am talking about this and that. I'm not doing what you tell me to do. Because Cody is spatting his mouth left, right, and centre, mate. Do you know why? Because Vince knows now that you're walk away. Like, it's not a problem to him. No, but what I'm saying, though, is Vince is allowing that to happen. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Vince, Vince knows that Cody, if, if Cody doesn't get his own way, Cody will go, all right, boss, fuck you, I'm off. Yeah, he may do that, mate, but that's no that's no worry to Vince, though. He'll just put someone else in his spotlight. Cody's not all that, mate. No, I know that, but you know it is mean? worry to Vince, because that's why he's invested all this money. He wants him. He wants... Because he believes he's taking... But even so, <laughs> let me you. let me stop you though. But even so, right? If that's the case, if Vince has gone right, I, I've done everything that I can, blah blah blah. Cody has still convinced him to allow him to be a bit more free and open and a little bit more shooty. Mm-hmm. Now that's not like WWE, so that's what I'm saying. So MJF could easily walk in there and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm buddy buddy with Cody," blah blah blah, and people accept it because of the shoot side of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Said so, Cody, yes, MJF, no, MJF's name isn't big enough. I don't know. Cody, I think will, he is. Whether you rate him or not, Cody is a, a household. He is a household name, but he's shit. Now. It's because of his daddy. Well, daddy. for that reason, it is what it is. He is a, he is a household name now. Like, I mean, simple as that. Yeah. So you do get that leeway when you're a household name. Like, I mean, like Stone Cold wasn't Stone Cold in '95 because Stone Cold wasn't Stone Cold yet. No, I get that. But MJ, MJF is in the dirt oh. sheet so often, mate. Do you know what I mean? I think uh, every wrestling fan knows who MJF is. Yeah, I would assume so, mate. So, the internet days. But I can't remember what my yeah. point was. We've gone massively off the subject. Yeah. What were we talking about? 
Fuck it, we'll stop it there. Now we're going to move on. You all good to move on? Yeah, man. Now we're going to move on to Rampage. So, um, yeah, starting off Rampage shall be me. Was yeah, Eddie Kingston versus Jake the Snake Hager. <laughs> it's not Jake the Snake Hager, it's just Jake Hager. Uh, not a bad match, just a little bit stale. Started I mean, off in the brawl. With, I like that sometimes. Yeah, straight uh, in, straight into it from uh, the off of the show line. Yeah, I do like that sometimes. But I don't think it suited him this week. No, I think they, I think we wanted Eddie's pop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they do put they put the, the entrances on YouTube. So, oh, yeah. So if a match starts like like it did on Rampage, certain matches now you can see the actual entrances of the wrestlers on YouTube, like which is fucking stupid really but anyway <laughs> let's get into it Eddie versus Jake a uh, big back backdrop by Hager was my first note which was a little bit into the match before that Hager was pretty much owning the fuck out of Eddie Kingston uh, yeah. suplex on the outside by Jake belly to belly by Jake Eddie chops and boots overhead belly by Jake Eddie gets chucked into the guardrail Eddie grabs Jake's nuts and the commentary are going it's a five on two it's a five on two do you get it do you get it? Uh, and that was to break a hold. An eye poke, uh, then a DDT by Eddie. A Hager bomb gets two count, which looks okay, man, but they, they make it out to be too big, the Hager bomb. Um, yeah. An exploder, then a backdrop by Eddie gets a two count. Uh, Hager hits the MMA big dump move, whatever that's called. Ankle lock by Hager uh, gets a rope break by Eddie Kingston. Power bomb out of the corner by Eddie. So half the work was already done. Jake Hager was up on the corner. Two back fists or Urinagis. Urinagis? Uh, Oricans. Oricans. Uh, by Eddie Kingston, which was the finish of the match. Eddie Kingston wins, but I went Jake man of the match. Uh, I agree. Hager man of the match. Um, I like the way he... Because I thought, I knew uh, Eddie was going to win. Mm. But I was like, oh, mate, if Hager gets like... Picks an Oracle and loses, that's going to be a tip, like, I mean, because he's a big beast and they're just going to carry on flattening him. But so I like the way he had to take two. He took all of our man's two Oracles and yeah. then got in, like, what that's for. Yeah, it was. It was good, that man. Um, Captain both at the level, you like, it made it believable for the storyline. It made Eddie look good and it made the uh, ego look good. So I did like that. The only thing I, <clears throat> I didn't like about this match, and this is why I felt like it was a bit stale, is Eddie Kingston doesn't have a move set. He's got, he does. he's got the side, he's got the exploder, the side oh, suplex, <coughs> and the chop, and a pile driver. Oh yeah, and a pile driver from the chop. So like, all he does is chop, like and I get it, like his bit in the corner where he does the multiple chops, whack 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 yeah. whack whack. That's cool, I like that. But it's like every counter that that Eddie does, it seems to be a chop. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like, all oh, right, I'm, I'm coming back now. I'm coming back for you. Guess, guess what it is? Whack. It's more about the facials and when on his knees. When, Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's all cool as well, mate. But it's just that there's too many. It's more about that than the moves that he. He is, but he's got to have more than just chops. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, it's a bit shit, like. But uh, yeah, one moment from me. Yeah, agree. One moment. Mm. So yeah, a little bit of a stale one. Next up, we had Tony with Brett Baker, Jamie Hitter, and Rebel dissing Tony Storm, basically saying, How dare you touch the belt? Yeah. If anyone's going to be the new champion, it's me. It's going to be the DMD, she is what she says. She goes, yeah. It'll be the DMD, Dr. Britt. DMD. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just said that, didn't I? I sent out a, t- a, tw- a tweet, which made me laugh. And he went, actually, I put the D in DMD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Very clever. But nobody cares about you, Cole. Nobody <laughs> cares about you. With your Adam Cole is a baby. But anyway, I digress. Next up, we had a promo, and it was Ortiz says, why didn't he see that Jericho was a bastard? Um, you were always going to cheat. You've cheated throughout your whole career. Your hair is mine. 
don't know. And then it moves on then to the next match. So over to you, Dawes. I'd like to just say the big dude, the basketball man, his name is BBM. Basketball man. BBM slash real name because I read that. <laughs> it's the only time I do. Sanji Seat. That's what I said. So basically, I was just thinking of calling him Satnav. Call him Satnav. Because he doesn't know his, He needs a Satnav because he doesn't know his way around the ring. And they're boring as well as fuck. Well. Yeah. Please turn left. No, fuck you, Satnav. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Satnav and Lethal, the Satnav's debut versus David Vega and Matt Pritchett. Probably their debut too. It was their debut. It's crazy, uh, man. After all this time, even though it's Dynamite debut, I should uh, Rampage debut. I haven't watched Elevation and Dark in a while. Have you watched Elevation? Yeah. Because I've got time, and it's normally like I know it's always less than an hour, but Dark still modifies, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the reason I haven't watched it the last couple of weeks is because they've been like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm not, I, I can't, I'm, I'm done with the, giving up my time. The only time I've got the elevation on now is if I get it and my missus doesn't get it at the same time as me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because then it's not like, because I know I'm not really watching it, it's just background noise while I'm having a Zuko or making steps and that, ready for it. I've watched like, I've watched one or two matches on it, like, but then it's like when I finish work, I'm out in the shed having a split like doing. Yeah. I'll chuck it on then, like, do you know what I mean? Like, and I, I might watch a little bit, but then when I go in, I don't bother keeping it on, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, so, but uh, I should really, because that's where some of the, the newer talent comes through, and every now and again, it's like, oh, fucking hell, man, he's good, or she's good. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, anyway, back to the match. Saturn Rav takes both out with a crossbody. Shit. And with. Shit. It, looked, it did look quite impressive because he is just big, so big, but it looked awkward as fuck as well. It looked big. Yeah. Uh, and then assisted double, like, Satnav holds both the drivers while lethal injection is executed. Satnav and, and lethal win. I actually went with Satnav man of the match. I went with Jay. Lethal. He only did a lethal injection. Yeah, I know, but it was, it was invigorating rather than just a guy kind of trying to jump across two people but not actually jumping across two people that, that was not an impressing me much ah, ah, oh yeah, yeah not at all so uh no yeah shit match man shit match seven foot five people can't do a cross <laughs> <laughs> well mate put it this way normally I would just put squash match for something like that I'd write squash match but I wrote shit Shit. Basketball mans don't do wrestling. Take that from all the other basketball mans. But anyway, what happened after the match? Oh, that's right, they attacked the guys. And then I wrote, BBM is shit. But we're going to change that to Satnav is shit. And eventually it's just going to be turned into Twatnav. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on, shall we? Uh, next up, we had a promo with Lexi Nair looking for Hookhausen and she can't find him. And then Dan, Ro- Dan Housen rocks up on a golf buggy and he's like, Oh, yeah, very good, very nice, very well. I'm going now. Look at Hook. Hook rocks up in like a. I couldn't even tell what it was really, like, because it was like. It's a ca- out I couldn't really see much of it though, mate, because it had so much camouflage on it. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah, he had like a proper pimped up one, didn't he? Like, very cool. Mm. I-, I hope they. They keep on using those now going forward, like. Mm. That'd be cool, like. Do some segments where they're, like, chasing each other and shit, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. Next up. Do you want me to do this one? Yes, do want me to do this one. You just did that awesome match, didn't you? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That sounded, <laughs> that sounded motivational. But anyway, next match we had Statlander versus Red Velvet in what I like to call Stat kicked the fuck out of her. Brilliant match, I thought. It was a brilliant match, yeah. Statlander was incredible in this match. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Stat Power Slam on the outside before the bell to uh, Red Velvet. That looked wicked. Good entrance, yeah. Military drop onto the apron. Looked cool. Big knee in a corner by Stat. Like, literally, this is all straight off. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, 
So that climbs the ropes uh, from the outside with red on her back and then does a head take down from the top. Goes for the crossbody but misses. Uh, delay vertical, suplex by stat, gets countered by red. She goes over the back and hits her with a chop block. Uh, red works the leg down there going forward and taunting the crowd going, Oh, we want to cheer for an L, do you? You want to cheer for an L? Uh, backstabber gets a two count by Red in a corner. STO on the knee by Stat. That looked wicked. Blue Thunder, or a super Blue Thunder bomb by Stat. Gets a two count. Roll up pin gets a two count. Uh, I'll say that again. The roll up pin is the beginning of a move that gets a two count. Then she deadlifts her into a wheelbarrow German suplex, which she should have then pinned her again. Was fucking sick by Statlander. Mm -hmm. uh, Falcon Arrow gets, a t gets two by Stat. I think it was a Falcon Arrow. I'm not exactly sure. Like Falcon Arrow or a Mission Yuka Driver. Like Mikanusha Driver, that's the one. Yeah. But it's basically a, it's a Blue Thunder Bomb, but they're the opposite way when they land. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Knee strike on a rope by Red. Where's our eye? Terrible cutter off the corner by Red. Absolutely dreadful, man. She didn't look at us. So, she corkscrewed it, didn't she? I thought it looked good, mate. No, oh, mate, she. She didn't cock through nothing. She like, she jumped backwards, and didn't even spot her landing at all. Like, if it wasn't for Stat like falling down at the right time, it would have looked like she didn't connect at all. It was just I'm lucky the Stat went down. Like, watch your back, mate. You'll see it. Yeah. Um. Terrible cut off the corner by Red. Super kick by Red gets a two count. And then, I didn't really. I didn't really know what this was, but it was a six setup to the night fever. Oh, that was it. She does, She puts her arms oh. under her legs. Arms under her legs, flips it up so she catches it into a pile driver position. Yeah, yeah wicked that is, yeah. mate. Uh, and that was the finish of the match. I thought it was a great match, like I said. Statlander, man of the match. Statlander wins. Yeah, and four moments. Oh. Lots of bookers this week, mate. Yeah. Lots of bookers. Um, after the match, Hogan attacks Stat. Jade pump kicks Stat on the outside. Anna Jay comes out. Gets fucked up, and then Athena comes out, and she's stopped by Feds all of a sudden. Yeah, none of this made sense. Again, I've pointed out on this before, like when, like we know they're all beefing. We yeah. know him, Athena's in with Anna Jane because they were in the promo last week together. Mm -hmm. So why are they running down separately? Yeah, straight away they should be running down together, and then it would make sense if Feds stopped them. She could have been taking a shit. She could have been. I know you say, but every week, like, you know, you just happens to be having a shift, then. They're not very good mates, <laughs> they? Or, you know, get your fucking prostate sorted. Like, every time I rang you and went, sorry, bro, I can't help you, I'm having a shift. Like, <laughs> I just use shit as a, a vague example, like, I mean, they could be drinking a Desperado. I mean, like, they could be playing, <laughs> they could be in the middle of a FIFA game on PlayStation or something, like, I mean. Uh, well, that, no, maybe, yeah, okay. Who knows? But yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I do, I do kind of agree. I do agree. That like. makes sense. Like for a start, like I said, if if they both were down together and events stopped them, yeah, it would have made sense. But it made even less sense when like they ran down separate. I was like, okay, well, I know Athena's coming up, but then when the feds came out, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. What's the point? So, well, what are you doing that for? Yeah, like this show is only an hour long. Now you're just wasting time. Yeah, oh. um, maybe even if they did do that, they should have allowed it to get through like right at the end. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. an end cut to commercial or whatever? But no, they decided to put that mid-match. But never mind. Uh, yeah, so Fed stopping Ath Athena, Hogan attacks that, and Anna J is fucked up. So yes, so the referees obviously don't like Anna J because they just let her run down, get beaten the fuck up, and went, "Nope, you're helping him in." Yeah, <laughs> and then nope, we gotta protect the uh, the uh, people that come from the bigger companies and stuff like that. Gotta protect those. Just in case they get whinged, and then they go, oh, but I'm injured. That's why we call them whinged. Um, yeah, I'll do the next promo, <clears throat> because then it's all over to you. And it was a promo by Miro. Check this out for some notage. Redeemer, blah, blah, blah. And then Ethan says, next week, you pray to me. You like that? Yeah. Good. They were good. That was good representation, because Ethan was shocking. <laughs> And Miro was talking shit again. Talking Miro about... Miro was doing the God promo but saying, I'm not following my God anymore. Yeah, now I want his house. <laughs> it's like, how the fuck does he know the God's got a house? He could have a fucking palace. He could have a boat. He could have a dinghy. 
He might be homeless because he owns the will. Exactly, mate. He could have a fucking blimp. God could be Danhausen. You ever thought about that? Very nice, that. very evil. Be... Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, basically, Redeemer, blah, blah, and an ether goes, You know who I'm going to win to? Me. You like know what I'm going to do to? Me. You know what I'm going to say, son? Me. I'm going to keep on doing it. Me. It sounded crap, man, from Ethan Log. Like. And he did drop in the, the fact he's Canadian. Yeah, obviously because of the he tournament. National thing going. But yeah, the way he was like pointing at himself and going, me, 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 it just didn't seem convincing at all. No. So, uh. uh I do like the matchup, the lineup, though, Miro versus Ethan Page. So, yeah. I think Ethan's got to take it, though, haven't he? Oh, yeah. You know? I, but I think Miro's going to win. I, I, this is what I mean, though. I think, I think, uh,. Ethan should take it because he haven't really had any major push at the moment like do you know I mean but at the same time Scorp's got his belt now at the moment so there's exactly. no point putting a belt in in two uh, two belts in one group like do you know I mean yeah I know but at the same time he doesn't have just because he wins his match doesn't mean he have to win the tournament no I know I appreciate Shit. that but Miro coming back all he's done is beat Johnny Nobody I mean Johnny Elite I mean Johnny Impact I mean Johnny x I mean Johnny, Johnny whatever Tux. Johnny whatever like <laughs> Johnny Pavel. Johnny whatever he likes <laughs> but yeah um, it should be a good match Ethan yeah. and Miro you know and nothing more to say on that <laughs> so yeah over to you bro on the motherfucking PMP which was this but screen promo with Mark Henry the main event of the evening which was FCR and Trent Versus Willow Spray and the Aussie Open. Being Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher. Why not? And there was Aaron Minery was their kind of manager guy. Fair enough. And botched a step of TRS by Old Bray right off the bat. Real fucking shoddy looking. Who was that? Uh, Willow Spray. Oh, the scrappy takeover. Yeah, it was a TRS. Yeah. Hey, look, I don't know, man. I watched it back a few times. Like, I was like, oh, did he just fuck that up? But he didn't, man. He didn't actually fuck it up, like, because if you watch it, when he hooks him in, he kind of hooks him in with the, the cup of his shin. And he made, like, Trent holds his calf. Yeah. So when he actually rolls out of it, Trent is locked into that move, providing he's got hold of his calf, which obviously we know that happens in a lot of wrestling, like, do you know what I mean? You've got to hold yeah. on to your opponent to get the momentum and that. But it did look, it looked scrappy as fuck, I agree with you. But I think it was an actual move, mate. I, know. I, I think. Know. I think. Um, Springboard Moonstalk to the outside by Trent on Oathbury. A twisted running drop kick by Oathbury in the corner where, like, um, Ozzy Open just grabbed him as he was running and launched him. That looked real sick there, but. Yeah. Dax, the old Ben Wilder Tribble, tribute, multiple Germans. Yeah. Uh, Clash Power, Power Slam. Rolled into Dax, Sherman, then the Jack Knife pin gets the two count. They do that every week, but it looks sick every time. Yeah, yeah. Agree. Um, assisted cutter, then 450 splash by Ozzy and Osprey. That looked wicked, man, the, the assisted cutter. Yeah. It, uh, sorry, Seven, it didn't Seven, look, uh, sorry, it didn't look wicked. It was a unique way yeah. to do the move, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I would imagine that someone like the Bucks would probably do that better. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, I'll just cut, cut against the two for our spray. Oh, it's uh, as well. by Casper's nice. Oh, for me. Uh, off, off, off Oosprey's springboard to the outside. Takes out FTR. At this point, he's a legal man. He doesn't enter the match again. Was he the legal man? Yes, he was the legal man because he was there. I don't believe he was. I think... I didn't... I didn't see no tag. When they... When the guys did the double team first of all they did the the drop and kick to the face then they did the assisted cutter there was no i didn't see no tag made i just seen osprey go the to the top and drop. A legal man when he did when they did the cutter they weren't the double team guy was well, why did he go for the pin then the, 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 it was the, the guy against two for osprey because it was a springboard cutter gets a two count yeah which was spray pin for the pin yeah, the two. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so Will Ospreay should have been the legal man? Yeah. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 I didn't notice that. 
I did, mate. Springboard, because I was like, right, he springboards the outside for no reason, like, because yeah. he had the advantage. So what are you doing? Like, he just went committed suicide. Like, if you weren't the league, if you weren't the legal man, I get it. Mm. You're the legal man. Because, to me, and most of the way... Just, Go on. He doesn't come back in the match, then. Uh, a lot of the way through the match, right? You know the the young guy, uh, yeah. Fletcher, I think it was. He kept on getting tagged by Osprey pretty fast throughout the match, like. And every time he come in, I was noticing. I was thinking, every time he comes in, FTR and Trent seem to get the advantage. You know, mm. and it happened like three times in the match, and Trent was cut off for a while, like, and then he come in, and then it it changed things, like. So I I thought it was, but yeah, I I don't recall there being man. Yeah, I don't. Sure, go on. I'm pretty sure I'm not on that, mate, because things like that piss me off, like, because yeah. it's basic wrestling science, like, you Yeah. Know? It's story, anyway, like it's story like. It's a come out what I want it to be. Mm. Like, do you mean it was a come out or it's not? Fuck you. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm surprised, uh, though. Uh, go on. Uh, strong zero by Trent. FTR and Trent win. I went with Cash Man on that. I went with Trent Man on the match. Uh, a couple of bits you didn't see. Swinging DDT by Trent. To Osprey looked incredible. Uh, Trent does a moonsault to the outside, does his foot in, twists his ankle. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end of the match, obviously he does a strong zero and a couple of other moves, hobbling on one foot. But yeah, by all accounts, I think his foot is a little bit banged up for a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I went Trent out of the match, just because he endured the match on one leg. So uh, and I thought it was a great match. I think. Um, oh, freaking match. Osprey, uh, Osprey, and the Aussie Open both impressed me quite, quite a lot. Like so. Yeah, I mean Osprey, I've seen a little bit of, mm. but not, not as much as I did, like Kenny Omega. Yeah. Or Fala before I seen them weekly on TV. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I, mean? I really don't. I've seen him a few on a few sporadic matches, but I know he's got massive hype like Kenny Omega, AJ Styles, yeah. and Fala did when they were on the Indies. Well, I've or, I've heard more. I've heard more of the stuff that he talks than actual scene stuff that he does. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, when I check wrestling news and rumours and whatever, like Facebook, YouTube, blah, 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 blah. He seems to have a lot to say a lot of the time or he seems to be in the in the main news a lot of the time, actually. I mean, so, yeah. you know, that's, that's good because that's what you want in AEW. You want people who are being talked about. So, you know, it's big. It's big, big, big. How many moments do you have? Okay, he, uh, had a, he had a spider. Three. Yeah, me too. Three. And who'd you go man of the match? Uh, Cash. Cash. Yeah, Trent for me. Trent. They were great. Everyone, everyone, uh, everyone impressive in this match. Even the uh, Aussie Open, who I know nothing about. Yeah. Well, that that um, Mark Davis, I think he's Welsh. Why? Because of his name. I think so. I would say so. It's a very Welsh name. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If I didn't know better, I'd say he looked Welsh. Or not. But anyway, that's all we've got for Rampage. It was a okay show, Rampage. It wasn't... I didn't really rate both of the shows this week. I, I felt like they were just okay shows. Some good matches on it, but just okay shows. Like, um, Rampage was probably better than Dynamite overall. No, nah, I thought the other way around. When I say that, though, I mean Rampage is normally weak. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I thought Rampage was quite, quite stable this week. Yeah, a bit of a stab from last week, like. Yeah. yeah, I'll go with that. I'll go with that, but I do still think uh, Dynamite was a bit better this week. But, um, yeah, so we shall now move on to... Providing doors, he's got some... Rumours! Yeah. Oh, there is no new. Rumors no, 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 rumors. Yeah, we don't know no wrestlers, man. Well, we know one, but uh, we, we don't really talk to him. and the MVP have an altercation in a hotel lobby. And it, the, the conversation went a little bit like this. Nah, fuck you, 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 nah, fuck you. That's all I know. Sounds like I, so that's all I really heard. It was about politics, apparently. There was another little thing in the news, which I haven't read yet. Uh, the origins of MVP and Jericho's breakdown. Okay. Like where they first happened, but uh, I don't know where that is. Uh, Juice Robinson has been stripped of the New Japan United States title, failing to make the trip to over to Japan to defend the title in the match against Willowsbury and someone else. 
Okay, um, I never heard that. So, it's just uh, basically me doing a singles match between Willow Spray and this ever person. Okay, I did not know that. Uh, next bit of news: the Great Muta is retiring from wrestling. Fucking hell, man! He's been yeah, well, long he... time. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's retiring at Cyberfest, I think it's called. Okay. So, yeah, good man. It's nice, nice to see a wrestler. You know, who, who's had that longevity, like, like he has, like he's been in a lot of companies, but never kind of like an Undertaker, never kind of like you know, like the Rock Stone Cold. In Japan, he is, but he's not like, I don't know. For me, he's always been like a kind of name that I've known about, and I've seen a few of his matches because when he was in Impact, you know. Yeah. I've, I mean, I saw him in WCW as well. And he was in his prime then. Like, yeah. In, that's when, like, they made a big hoo-ha with him coming in, so, like, he was, like, a god before he even wrestled. Yeah. Like, well, this is the thing, like... Go on. You know those, like, promos where they can manage to hype someone that they're already a main eventer before they even get there, like... Yeah. I think, like, and that's what they did. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know too much about WCW, obviously, like, you know, as I've stated before on you, but, um... Yeah, I... I, I thought it was worth putting in news anyway, so... You, what are you, you going next? What are you going next? Brilliant and impact as well, like even in this day and age, like yeah. Didn't he have um? Who's the two Japanese guys that he come in with? I think one of them was Okada, and the other one was. Uh, yeah, it was years ago, man. And Okada come in. He was only in it for a short amount of time, and they they just fucked yeah. it up, like they just messed up his gimmick and all that. They didn't give him a, a decent push, and he was like, he was on his way to be the man. It was it was Okada, and it was someone else. I want to say Ibushi, Ibushi, but I know it's not. But anyway, regardless, let's carry on. Let's let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Otherwise, we're gonna doodle. A uh, page is officially being released by the WWE, or not? Really, a contract will be renewed at the end of the month on the July seventh. He actually said he didn't dis WWE at all. He said, "Thank you very much for my time. I appreciate everything. Although I just want the fans to know, I did not want to leave WWE. Yeah, I did pitch a number of ideas." And they were like, and they they turned around and they were like, no, because you decided to keep your fucking social media, didn't you, bitch? And she was like, ah, well, yeah, because it's my fucking private life. So go fuck yourselves. And they were like, huh, no, well, we don't like that, though. And she was like, huh, well, go fuck yourselves. And they were like, huh, no, you go fuck yourself. And she was like, huh, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. She said she is still not clear to wrestle, although that is her inspiration to get back to being able to do. She said she will wrestle again, providing she gets cleared. Yeah. Is what, and she's uh, inspired to do that. Um, yeah. But she does feel a thousand percent mm-hmm. mentally and physically in what she can do. Well, what um, I would say... Willing no. to go to AEW for the right dollar. I would absolutely love to see it in AEW. I wouldn't like to see a wrestling in AEW. No, unless she's clear. I think I would like to see it in there for a short stint. No, I don't want to see a wrestling in AEW. I don't want to, I don't want to see it. I don't want her getting too big of a push over other people at the moment if she's going to do so come in as a manager first come in as a face and a voice do you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah. And, and do that because the thing is she's got so much like she's got so much grit to her do you know what I mean like she's a gritty character she always has been yeah. a gritty character do you know what I mean like and that's what AEW is all about like and I think she could offer a lot as a manager mm-hmm. or something of a maybe general like a general manager maybe yeah, well, she did that on SmackDown, didn't she, for a bit? Yeah, but she's got that feistiness to her, like, so... Huh? You can't hear or anything. Yeah. She's got a heap of experience mm-hmm. in every form of wrestling. That's not the guess. She grew up in an indie wrestling family. Exactly. They own more indie promotion, like, Jerry. Yeah. Her exactly. name alone would draw on many. She's got a fan base... Including myself, I, I've always been a biggest fan. Yeah. And when she debuted, I was like, "Watch this bitch, she is sick." Yeah. So. The next bit of news: the rumor going around is AEW and New Japan Wrestling are potentially going to switch titles. Not as in like switch titles, but officially, but the IWGP World Title is going to end up around Hangman's waist and on AEW TV for a minute. And the AEW world title is going to end the interim title 
is going to end up in Japan for a month. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Wouldn't be a bad so idea at all. Companies around the world, basically. Yeah. That's the idea about it. And it makes sense to me. What would be good about that as well is if... As well, I'm more believable to be watching the, the Japan World Champion on AEW than some fake champion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, what would be good about it as well is if if each other's company has got the belts, they could always do that angle of, well, look, man, we want our belts back, Rock Jimmy. Like, oh, what do you mean having yeah. your belts back? Right, we're going to invade you. The invasion angle is there to a degree. Do you know what I mean? So that yeah. could be cool. Like, it doesn't happen like it used to now because when people just rock up, like, the fans pop. They're like, oh, we know anything's possible. Yay! Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not a case of, oh, fuck, didn't expect him to be there. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, we'll see how that goes with our like, Jimmy. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool, though. Um, WWE and Dark Side of the Ring creators are working on a new show together. Oh, well, um, that'll be shit. Is, uh, whatever it is. That'll be Vince McMahon basically going, look, you keep damaging my reputation. Uh, how much are you going to take you to shut your mouth? And they've gone, ka Yeah, it, well, it's not Dark Side of the Ring. It's not, That's not what they're producing. That's what I'm saying. It's a completely new show. Yeah. Definitely show. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's about, but it's not the Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll carry on doing Dark Side of the Ring because it's fucking brilliant. Well, I've heard this on pause. I've heard, this, yeah. I've heard this being paused at the moment. Um. Real reason. Now, remember, I said, I know you don't watch that video, but I was saying about Judgment Day, Edge's group, and they say they're back. Yeah, yeah. The reason was. The original reason leaked was because they were afraid that because Cody was injured, they needed a top maybe face them. And then it's, well, it's come out that now, that apparently the real reason, again, this is just a rumour, is that Vince wanted to make them a mystical, magical group, like an Undertaker reacts gimmick, and Edge was like, what the fuck? No. And Vince was like, yes, and Vince and Edge came up with loads of different ideas, and Vince was like, no, no. So, and I just like, all right, then, well, what do you want to do? And he was like, well, you have to get out of the group then, then you, obviously. Okay. So Vince strikes again? Yeah. Considering, like, Edge was the whole reason this group was created. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like a very Vince thing to do. Yeah. Well, some NXT thing you're doing, and oh, it's going well now, isn't it? Oh, all right, then, I'll dip my fingers in it. No, it's shit, yeah. That was fucking crap. I don't even watch it. I didn't even watch it in the beginning. I watched maybe two or three shows with you. But I mean, it was brilliant when Triple H was in charge. It yeah. was fucking awesome. But fuck, Vince has got his mitts in it. But like I said to me, at the moment, anything goes on TV, Vince has got his hand in it. Yeah. Um, Zach Zaber Jr. calls out Brian Danielson and says, if you think you're the fucking best wrestler in the world, why don't you come and try me, bitch? Yeah. That's at uh, Forbidden Door, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that could be cool. I hope it happens. Huh? I hope it happens. Yeah, that'd be good. It'd be a good match, man. Good wrestler, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre is another one I've only seen a little bit of, but he, every time I've seen him, he's been... Yeah. Impressive. Um, Aaron Storms, a.k.a. Aaron Rex, a.k.a. whatever he was in Fuck Fins. Aaron Sandow. That's the one. The Miz now. He's done with NWA. Says he loves wrestling. But wrestling does not love him. He needs to put his health and future first. Unfortunate. It sounds about right. It's like, he just doesn't seem to... I don't know. don't know what it is about him, man. He's pretty cool, like, but he just don't seem to get momentum, does he? I, I loved him in WWE. I loved him in Impact until they tried to make him that gay, weird character, and then... Liberace. Yeah, it just... It, but it just went tits up. Yeah. NWA, I can't really tell you much about it, because I haven't watched it, but he no. seems to be doing all right in NWA when I was watching it. Well, NWA doesn't really have a big following, though, as far as I'm aware. Not like a lot of the other wrestling. Like. But, like, with um, Ryan Nemeth, not Dolph Ziggler, yeah. Yeah, he did a he was doing the milk promos on BT. Did you yeah. see any of those? No. Where he was doing these creepy like thriller videos and they were like 
him sitting in the corner of the room, like just regurgitating milk backwards. Do you know what I mean? Like just spitting all cream down the face front of him, like. And it was a there was a segment with Aaron Sandow or whatever his name is, and he was literally sat in the corner with like a feeding tube going into his mouth, into a into a carton of cream, and he was wrapped up in duct tape, like with all plastic on him and shit, like. And he's just there going, <laughs> just sucking the milk, like. What a fucking storyline, man. It was, right, I, you may have not have seen it, right, but the cream, the cream promos, right, were fucking wicked. They were proper weird and creepy and unusual. And I, when I seen him in the promo, I, I thought, oh, that'd be wicked, man, to have him over in AEW, like. And then nothing. After that, mate, there was no mention of him, no sight of him, nothing at all. And then they, they just stopped doing that gimmick then, like, do you know what I mean? It's a strange one because normally when they get released by WWE, it's because the fans didn't like him. Yeah. But I thought he was really good in WWE. I really, I was really enjoying it. I loved him in AEW, mate, and my missus did. Until he, he turned into that Liberace character. Impact. Impact, yeah, what did I say? AEW. Oh, yeah, Impact, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah. he was good, yeah. man. Yeah, Liberace shit. Like, yeah. The only, the only one that made anything out of that was Spud. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it like that type of character is too big for Impact. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it'd probably be too big for AEW as well. Like, but as a wrestler, man, he was pretty good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he was entertaining. So, but yeah, it'd be a shame, man, if he if he stays out of it. Best wishes to him either way. Yeah. Do what's best you said. Absolutely. And um, last one I got uh, John Cena. Flying Who's out. been here again this whole episode? He's been right yeah. here. Say hi, John. Da, 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 da. The champ is here. The champ is here. He's right here. You um, can't see me. So, apparently, he flies out to, I believe it was Holland. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. To visit a Down Syndrome child from Ukraine who just, it was recently escaped Ukraine. Like, uh, I'm not sure if he went to said country. I think the, the, the kid had fleed Ukraine. Yeah. And, and come wherever over here. He didn't visit Ukraine or anything. No, John Cena didn't go to Ukraine. Ah, right, okay. That's why I thought you no, were getting said, that. I, no, he went to Holland. I, I think the kid ends up in Holland. Right. John Cena, only was like, he had three days off him and he flew over to Holland and spent the day no. with this kid fair play. Yeah, nice thing to do. It's John Cena. Yeah. P he's, a, he's a fucking peacemaker, isn't he? Love him. Yeah, he is. But, uh, yeah, I got him on news. He some good, good ones today, mate. Fair play. This week? Yeah, I, I actually had, I had time to fucking read it this week. I do, I, mate, I always read them, like, I just never write them down, like. It's like, when you can pop up with it then, when you're like, oh, this and I was like, oh, yep, yeah, right, I know that, I remember that, you know, so it's, it works like that for this, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Or something I'll say, I'll remind you of something else you've read. Yeah. Like The Great Muta, don't know if you had that written down, but yeah. it, it was in my head, like, so, uh, yeah. You got any more? Nope, that's it, bro. Excellent. Then, we shall say... Thank you for liking, thank you for sharing, thank you for helping and what has helped do this blog. Thank you for Dorsey being there. Thank you for me being here. Uh, we are the Real Wrestling Show Dash Blog. We have many other videos online. We have The Greenhouse. We have Merchandise Memoirs. Episode 1 of the second season is up. Episode 2 shall be up. This week. Excellent day. And I shall be doing one as well. Um, after that, making it number 3. Um, that's all we got, huh? there's also uh, a few other videos at the live events there will be a load more coming this year yeah definitely Castle Clash oh yes yeah and uh, video uh, recording it should be fun yeah so um, yeah so peace thank you very much check us next week and yeah as you can probably tell it's very rough around the edges because we're just two dudes in a shed and in a box there he is hello so yeah Catch you next week.